Welcome to our morning show on WRCO Radio. We are pleased to have Alice in Dairyland here. Good morning. How are you, Alice? Good morning. I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me. Ashley Hagenow, where are you from originally? I am from Poinette, Wisconsin, so about half an hour north of Madison, give or take. Not too far away. Not too far. Did you have an ag background growing up then? Yes, I grew up very involved in 4-H and FFA. My younger sister and I exhibited livestock species like dairy cows, horses, rabbits, and even cats one year at the county fair. And I was so thankful to have experiences in those organizations, especially focused on communication and leadership and education and teamwork that I've been able to apply to a lot of other experiences within agriculture. And so I recently graduated from the University of Minnesota this past May with a degree in agricultural communication and marketing with minors in animal science and agricultural and food business management. And I definitely use so many skills from growing up and skills that I gained in college in the role of Alice in Dairyland. You talked about cats. It's like herding cats sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> everything you got to put together. Yes, it so. can be that way. <laughs> <laughs> so right now is the right. They're they're asking for uh, uh, some people to step forward and and apply to be Alice. Is that process going on right now? That process is taking place right now. So applications for Wisconsin's seventy seventh Alice in Dairyland closed at the end of January. So January 31st was the deadline to apply for the 77th Allison Dairyland. And more recently, we have had preliminary interviews to determine the top six candidates. And those top six candidates were officially announced on March 1st. So it's a super exciting time for the program where we are welcoming our next group of top candidates into the fold. And they will now start to learn more about Wisconsin Agriculture, Alice in Dairyland, and Door County specifically, since that is where the 77th Alice in Dairyland finals will be held with the official dates of May 2nd through the 4th. So your reign is going to be kind of short-lived here, isn't it? It's only about four months longer until I will officially pass the baton to Wisconsin's 77th Alice in Dairyland. But in those four months, we will be doing just as much as as we've been doing the first eight months of my year serving as the 76th Alice in Dairyland. So there's lots on the horizon for our program in terms of upcoming campaigns, events, and other activations. But I'm equally as excited for our top candidates to undergo the trainings and learn more about the role of Alice in Dairyland as we prepare for the Alice in Dairyland finals. Is it a little bit bittersweet? I mean, is there a little jealousy there thinking, oh man, they're going to have so much fun in the next year and I'm stepping down. It is a bittersweet moment because this experience has meant so much to me and I've loved the opportunity and love, continue to love the opportunity to represent Wisconsin agriculture. But what I'm so excited for is to see our next Alice in Dairyland have all of these amazing experiences and make so many memories just just like I have, and she'll add her own spin onto the role. What's so special about our program is each year there is a new person who steps into the role and truly makes the experience their own based on their own skills and experiences and opportunities that they've had before Alice in Dairyland. And that's what's so special is that there's a new person each year, but the goal of the program to have an official ambassador for Wisconsin agriculture has not changed in the 76, almost 77 years that Alice in Dairyland has existed. How good is it going to look on a resume for you now when your time is done and, you know, whatever you apply for, I'm sure that's that's going to help you in the future, isn't it? Yes, there is so much personal and professional development that one gains through being Alice in Dairyland and also as a top candidate. What's really special about being a top candidate within the last few years is that all top candidates earn a marketing and communications certification through the Wisconsin Department 
Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection. So regardless of the outcome of the Alice in Dairyland finals each year now, whether you are selected as Alice or if you are a top candidate, is that you walk away with a very unique certification through the Department of Agriculture here in Wisconsin, and you can apply those skills that you gain to any career in any industry. So again, there's a lot of professional development. There's so much personal development that results through this program. And I'm so thankful for the experience to apply all that I've learned and all that I've gained to a future career within agriculture. You mentioned going to school out of state. Uh, Do other states have a similar program to to Alice? I mean, it's obviously not called that, but uh, do they have some similar things? As I've done some research and travel a lot as Alice in Dairyland, I have come to learn that there is no other program that I have come across that is quite as similar to Alice in Dairyland as I've been able to find out about it. So what's super unique about Alice is that, again, you are a state employee under the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection for one year. So you are a state employee earning a salary. It's a full-time job. And we describe Alice in Dairyland as a full-time public relations and marketing professional role. Having some Minnesota roots, a similar Similar position would be known as Princess K of the Milky Way, if those listening have heard of that <laughs> program before, where Princess K is a goodwill ambassador for Minnesota's dairy industry. So the two programs would be similar in that they are both ambassador type roles for dairy and for agriculture, but Alice in Dairyland represents all of Wisconsin agriculture and agriculture in general, whereas Princess K focuses more specifically on the dairy industry. But both roles are so important when it comes to agriculture, especially here in the Midwest. But again, to answer your question, there is no role that I know quite like Alice in Dairyland. Could, could you beat her up? Could you take her? <laughs> hey, we love working side by side, and I've known quite a few former Princess Ks as well. So it's another great program that really helps to drive that connection to agriculture. I was just kidding, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Wisconsin cheese famous around the world, uh, and you talk about a new way for Wisconsinites to recognize some of their favorite cheeses. How can they go about that? Yes, so here in America's Dairyland, we produce right around 25% of the nation supply of cheese and our cheese production is more than double that of any other state in the country and part of the reason we are so well known for our cheese and cheese production is thanks in part to our nearly 1200 licensed cheese makers here in Wisconsin who produce over 600 varieties styles and types of cheese and they're also award-winning cheeses. Our cheeses here in Wisconsin earn more awards than any other part of the world. So when it comes to this time of year, we're in the month of March. March Madness is happening. Just like we have our favorite sports teams, especially basketball teams this time of year, We also have our favorite cheeses. And now in the midst of our Alice in Dairyland Wisconsin cheese campaign with our artisan cheese bracket for Wisconsin, everyone can have a chance to vote for their favorite cheeses and see which Wisconsin cheese rises to the top during the month of March, just like some of our favorite sports teams will also rise to the top here in March Madness. So I'm really excited to tie in sports and Wisconsin cheese together and have a really fun campaign over the next few weeks highlighting what makes Wisconsin cheese so special. Is that why you brought a basketball with you? (laughs) I do have a basketball with me in the studio (laughs) to honor March Madness. I was a basketball player myself in high school and really enjoy the sport the sport both as a spectator and as a player. So it's really fun for me this month to highlight some of my experiences from growing up and how it ties in now to my role as Alice in Dairyland. Awesome. So you were a basketball player. You were a track athlete as well. (laughs) I was. I uh, tried to stay well-rounded in high school and growing up, but I do love sports and I love being a spectator of sports now because it's really fun to follow along with your college teams and your favorite professional sports teams. And certainly here in Wisconsin, we have a lot of sports teams to follow. We do. So you're actually going to have a bracket for the cheeses then? Is that how that works, Ashley? Yes, we have a Wisconsin artisan cheese bracket that 
that we officially unveiled here at the first part of March. So we are now in the Elite Eight for our Wisconsin cheeses. So we have various varieties of cheeses, some of which we are highlighting today, that fall under that Elite Eight category. And throughout the month of March, because of everyone participating and voting for their favorite Wisconsin cheeses, we will narrow down the Elite Eight to the final four and eventually our champion cheese. All right. So is this the first year you've done this, the the, the March Madness for cheese? Last year with our 75th Alice in Dairyland, Taylor Schaefer, was the first year that we designed this campaign to have some March Madness aspects when it comes to Wisconsin cheese. So we're building upon the campaign this year. We're excited to continue highlighting specialty cheeses here in Wisconsin, both on social media and with media outlets across Wisconsin. And we're also excited to add a retail component to the campaign this year. So I will be traveling across Wisconsin and visiting various high V locations here in our state to hand out Wisconsin cheese samples and to really have folks taste what makes Wisconsin cheese so special. What cheese won last year, by the way? Do you remember? I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'll have to go back and look and we'll have to revisit it because there was a lot of great cheeses that come into play last year. And a lot of those same cheeses are part of the campaign this year. So mozzarella, I know, did pretty well last year in addition to aged aged cheddar and a few of our other specialty cheeses here in Wisconsin. So the other uh, inquiring minds want to know, uh, what is uh, Alice's favorite cheese? Do you have a favorite cheese? I love all cheeses, <laughs> I do have to say. But more lately, I've really enjoyed the aged cheeses. And so one of my personal favorites that I tried for the first time this year is a Montanamore cheddar from Sartori. It's almost like Parmesan and cheddar combined, and it is such a delicious cheese. So I've really enjoyed that cheese so far in my year as Alice in Dairyland, but I can't say no to any cheese. I love them all. So a, a 20 year old cheddar, would you would you like that or not? I would try a 20 year old cheddar. You definitely have a lot of crystals in that cheese specifically, but whether it's aged cheddars or fresh mozzarellas or some of the cheeses that we will highlight here today. I just love them all because it's helping to support Wisconsin's dairy industry. And that's a super important story to tell is all of the amazing products that come from our Wisconsin dairy farmers. And my goal as Alice is to drive demand for all of these products that everyone across Wisconsin and across the country can enjoy. Limburger? I've smelled Limburger. <laughs> I have yet to try Limburger, but I know that there are some diehard fans of Limburger cheese, especially here in Wisconsin. And I do admire that we are the only state to produce Limburger cheese. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. Right. And there are some that are unique to Wisconsin, uh, Colby and Colby Jack, and some of those uh, originated right here in the state, didn't they? They certainly did. So Colby Jack is one of the cheeses that we are focusing on during our Alice in Dairyland Wisconsin cheese campaign. And exactly right. Cole Jack or Colby Jack or Colby Monterey Jack, it has a few different names, was born in the town of Colby, Wisconsin. And Colby Jack is a very mild and versatile cheese. You can enjoy it melted, say, over nachos or maybe with some potatoes. You can also use Colby Jack in salads, sandwiches, in a lot of different recipes. And you can melt it maybe into some soup or a sauce. It adds a very creamy and rich flavor and texture to those types of foods. So again, Colby Jack, it's a very versatile cheese. I love just snacking on it because I love the taste of Colby Jack. How can we tell that our cheese is made in Wisconsin? You can tell that the dairy products, specifically cheese, like we're talking about, comes from Wisconsin when looking for the Proudly Wisconsin Dairy Badge or the Proudly Wisconsin Cheese Badge. Now, if you see this badge on dairy product packaging, you know that that cheese or that butter or that other dairy product was made and processed right here in Wisconsin. You can also look for the number 55 on milk product packaging and other dairy product packaging as that also signifies that that 
specific dairy product was made and processed here in the state of Wisconsin. So when you see that badge, you know that that dairy product, it comes from the state of Wisconsin. And it's a great way to support local when it comes to our state's dairy industry as well. Since Wisconsin dairy is a true economic engine for the state of Wisconsin, as it contributes $45.6 billion annually to our state's economy. And I love the chance that every time we might purchase a Wisconsin dairy product, whether it's cheese, ice cream, butter, milk, the list goes on. You are supporting our state's dairy farmers and processors as well by doing so. There are a lot of nice local retailers that that sell a lot of nice little cheese shops all over Wisconsin, aren't there? There are. I've gotten a chance to stop in to quite a few of those local cheese companies here in Wisconsin throughout my travels as the 76th Alice in Dairyland. And I've also had a chance to meet a few of our master cheese makers here in Wisconsin. And our state is so unique when it comes to cheese because we are so well recognized for our cheese all over the country and all over the world. And it's so rewarding to me to especially meet the master cheese makers and the people who truly help to make Wisconsin cheese so well recognized. And there are so many amazing businesses to support here in Wisconsin when it comes to Wisconsin cheese and Wisconsin dairy. Here in our area, Meister Cheese in Muscaday, um, I know they have some unique ones, but one of them is a morel cheese, some morel mushrooms. Yes. That's that's something pretty unique to this very area too. You're exactly right. And you start to really see some unique flavors come into play the more that you might travel across Wisconsin and get to stop in to some of those cheese making companies. There are more than 100 cheese making companies here in Wisconsin and every company has something a little bit different to offer. We recently had a Valentine's Day campaign with Alice in Dairyland where we were featuring Coco Cardova cheese from Car Valley Cheese. So they combined flavors of chocolate into the cheese and it was a great treat to enjoy around Valentine's Day or really any time of year. But you do find some very unique flavors and flavor pairings when it comes to Wisconsin cheese. I've heard that's good. Chocolate cheese, I guess that's legitimately a dairy product then. It is. I've tried some different chocolate cheeses and they're all amazing. They're very rich because you combine the flavors of chocolate with the cheese flavors and the dairy products that are going into those different cheeses. So it's a very unique product to try, especially if you love chocolate. What about curd? You know, I'm kind of a curd connoisseur. Um, There are lots of different flavors of that as well. There There are so many flavors of cheese curds. In fact, we will have some cheese curds that are part of our Wisconsin cheese campaign this year, specifically Ellsworth cheese curds, an amazing company to support in the Ellsworth, Wisconsin area. But I too love flavored cheese curds, especially maybe garlic and dill or ranch flavored cheese curds. I also like a little bit of spice. So anything that has a little bit of spice when it comes to cheese is especially delicious to me. But there are so many different cheese curd flavors as well. And they're delicious, whether they're enjoyed fresh or deep fried. And you especially have to look for that squeak. Oh, you do. Uh, you know, and I think if, if you're not frying them, they, they have to be at room temperature to really taste them, don't they? They do. That's when you really get that squeak and that delicious flavor is brought out in the cheese curd. Yeah, you bet. We're talking with Ashley Hagano, uh, Alice in Dairyland here on WRCO Radio. Um, how can people learn more about the dairy industry and, sing, and, and some things like that we've talked about? If you would like to learn more about Wisconsin dairy and Wisconsin cheese specifically, especially if you want to hear more stories from Matt master cheese makers and cheese companies here in Wisconsin. You can visit wisconsincheese.com. That is the website of Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. They are our state's dairy checkoff organization and they have amazing marketing campaigns centered specifically on Wisconsin cheese. So I would highly encourage you to check out their website. Again, that is wisconsincheese.com. 
Let's talk chocolate milk a little bit. Uh, that's a, that's another favorite beverage of mine. Uh, any, anything new in that uh, department? I also love chocolate <laughs> milk, especially when it comes to athletics, right? Because low-fat chocolate milk is a great way to help muscles recover after an intense workout or after a game or maybe a cross-country meet. And what's really special to me about Wisconsin dairy, especially on the topic of chocolate milk, is that milk production starts on our dairy farms here in Wisconsin. And 95% of the dairy farms here in Wisconsin are family owned. So the best quality dairy products products start with the best quality milk. And especially this time of year with March Madness and spring sports starting to begin their seasons, chocolate milk is the official beverage of the WIAA. So we're really focusing on highlighting our dairy farming families and also our athletes this time of year who are working hard during state tournaments and some upcoming games that they have. And chocolate milk is a great way to fuel all of their activities. I've tried a lot of them. I'll put in a plug. I, I think my favorite chocolate milk is Quick Trips. Ooh, Quick Trips is amazing. Mm -hmm. Another amazing chocolate milk, if you haven't had a chance to try it, is Sassy Cow ah. chocolate milk. They have a whole chocolate milk that is absolutely amazing. It's almost more like dessert, and it tastes absolutely delicious. But Quick Trip is also a great chocolate milk. I enjoy consuming lots of chocolate milk as I'm traveling across Wisconsin as it adds a little bit of protein into my diet. And I'm helping to support Wisconsin dairy farming families, which you are as well when enjoying all the different chocolate milks and milk in general that we have here in Wisconsin. Absolutely. Lots of different flavored milks. You know, they, they get into, uh, for St. Patrick's Day, you get, uh, you know, a, you get a mint one and, you know, there's a strawberry one and all of those. Are you fans of those too? I love all of those flavors of milk as well. And a fun story is back in September, we have had a few Girl Scouts programs with Alice in Dairyland this year. And so one of the programs that we had this past fall was at Hordes Dairyman Farm and Girl Scouts had the chance to tour the farm and get to see how cows are milked and learn more about Wisconsin's dairy industry. And we had a milk tasting activity as part of the lesson that day. So we had some white milk, chocolate milk, strawberry milk, and we also had pumpkin milk all from Quick Trip at that specific educational event. And almost all of the Girl Scouts said the pumpkin milk was their favorite. So that's another flavor that I love when it comes to milk. And I love that there are different seasonal flavors, right? That we can enjoy any time of year. So yeah, there's a lot of great flavors of milk to try here in America's Dairyland. Now you got me hungry for pumpkin milk and I'll have to wait till <laughs> September. Gotta wait a few months. <laughs> <laughs> for the next time. All right. Well, we'll take a break and come back. We have some cheese in the studio too. I think we need to maybe try that out here a little bit uh, with Alice in Dairyland 2000. 23. We'll be back with more in a moment from WRCO's Morning Show. Our morning show continues on WRCO. Alice in Dairyland is here, and it's been a tradition for us over the years to see if we can uh, connect, and we're glad that you were passing through today. So. Yes, I'm so thankful to be here in studio and connect about Wisconsin cheese and really all of Wisconsin agriculture. Indeed, and and we think it, we've talked about cheese, we've talked about dairy, but Wisconsin is so much more big for cranberries, like number one in the nation, aren't they? We are. As Alice in Dairyland, I talk about all of Wisconsin agriculture culture and just how diverse and abundant our state's agricultural industry is. So we've been chatting a lot about cheese here this morning, and certainly cheese is one of our top commodities here in Wisconsin, in addition to dry whey, since that is a byproduct of cheese production. But some of those other commodities that we are number one in the nation for include cranberries, as well as ginseng, green beans, or snap beans. And we also are the number one producer of mink pelts and bovine products. So there are many different products that Wisconsin is number one in the nation for. So you had to learn all that when you were preparing to, to be Alice. Uh, what, what surprised you the most? Anything that comes to mind? One 
commodity that I have learned a lot about is Wisconsin ginseng. So if you haven't heard of Wisconsin ginseng before, it is a specialty root crop here in Wisconsin. And most of our ginseng is grown at the 45th parallel, especially in Wausau, Wisconsin or Marathon County. So we as a state produce 98% of cultivated ginseng for the entire country. And then we produce 10% of the world's supply of ginseng. And ginseng has a lot of uses, as I've learned, whether it's enjoyed in tea, you can also take the root and slice that root for steeping or cooking purposes. You can enjoy ginseng in its powder form where you might put it into, say, a smoothie or into some baked goods or in to some soup. The list really goes on about ways that we can use Wisconsin ginseng. And what fascinates me is how well this product is known all throughout the world, especially to some of our top export countries like China, Korea, and Japan. And all of that production of ginseng or a good majority of that production takes place right here in Wisconsin. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that big. And I remember people looking for wild ginseng back in the day. I presume they still do. But you're talking about cultivated ginseng and uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's that big. Yeah. And both wild ginseng and cultivated ginseng is truly sought all over the world. What I recently learned about wild ginseng is that you might have wild ginseng sold for two, three, or four thousand dollars per pound. So since it's a little bit more rare than our cultivated ginseng, there is a lot of demand for wild ginseng. But whether it's wild ginseng or cultivated ginseng, both products definitely contribute to the strength of Wisconsin's agricultural industry, especially on the global scale. Get up a little bit further north, too. Potatoes are pretty big in the state, too, aren't they? Potatoes are a huge part of Wisconsin agriculture as well. We rank third in the nation for potato production here in Wisconsin behind Idaho and Washington State. But we are the top producer east of the Mississippi, so that is a claim to fame, another claim to fame for Wisconsin. And when it comes to potato production in Wisconsin, a majority of our seed potatoes are raised in Antigo, Wisconsin, and then a lot of our potatoes are harvested and processed in the central region of Wisconsin. So we're talking near Stevens Point, Plover, Adams, Wisconsin, and our potatoes love our state soil, Antigo Silt Loam. So they thrive here in Wisconsin, and they are a very important part of our state's agricultural industry as well. We talk about uh, apples and grapes, and we have a lot of fine orchards in our area, too. We do. Specialty crops is a lot of what I share as Alice in Dairyland as well, especially through our program Expedition Agriculture. So this is a recent initiative within the last few years with the Alice in Dairyland program, as we had received a specialty crop block grant through the USDA, or the United States Department of Agriculture, and And Expedition Agriculture is an educational program that is specifically geared for fourth graders here in the state of Wisconsin as this program aligns with a lot of the curriculum that is taught in fourth grade classrooms across Wisconsin. So we share about the five regions of Wisconsin. We share more about what agriculture is and what makes Wisconsin so special for agriculture. And then we share more about specialty crops here in the state of Wisconsin. So we touch on the tart cherry production, especially in Door County, and we touch on apple production and other fruits and vegetables that are raised and grown here in Wisconsin. And I love sharing this message with younger consumers here in Wisconsin because they always walk away with a lot of different products that they are really excited to try because they know that so many different foods are raised here in Wisconsin. So it's a very rewarding part of my experience as Alice in Dairyland is being able to connect with that younger consumer especially. And it's been so much fun doing so through the Expedition Agriculture Program. It's amazing how many wineries have popped up over the course of the last several years too. There are so many wineries here in Wisconsin and not just in one part of Wisconsin. They are all over the state of Wisconsin. So I've traveled to a few 
few different wineries near the Lake Geneva area, in the Madison, Wisconsin area. There's quite a few wineries in Door County. And as we prepare for the 77th Allison Dairyland Finals in Door County, I have the chance to travel up about once a month and learn more about agriculture in Door County. And wineries are definitely a part of that. And certainly the further north you go in Wisconsin, there are many wineries in the Bayfield and Ashland area and really all over our beautiful state. So they are an important business when it comes to Wisconsin agriculture. Another thing that's really popped up lately is a a lot of farms. People can visit the farms and and buy the produce right there. There are a lot of opportunities, uh, you know, where farms have diversified and, and changed in the last few years. They have, and it all goes back to supporting local. And more and more consumers want to know where their food comes from. And I am the same way. I love the chance to support local businesses. And I think that's what's so special about agriculture is that so many of our farmers and processors are so focused on sharing their story when it comes to how they grow and raise and harvest the food products that they sell and that they're known for. Whether it's protein products like maybe beef or chicken or it's fruits and vegetables that are very plentiful here in Wisconsin, or it goes back to dairy products like cheese and butter and ice cream. When we produce local then consumers have the chance to support local and it helps to strengthen our state's agricultural economy and the local economy and it keeps the dollars that we spend on food close to home and able to be reinvested into our communities. Do you spend a lot of time in classrooms, Ashley? I do. With the program Expedition Agriculture, I will have traveled to over 100 classrooms by the end of my year, serving as the 76th Allison Dairyland. And I've also gotten into classrooms with high school students through the Wisconsin Potato and Vegetable Growers Association. We had a few school visits back in December and at the first part of this year where I shared more about Wisconsin's potato industry And we had the chance to try a really unique recipe that uses Wisconsin potatoes. I was making a recipe for potato and chocolate chip cookies. So students had the chance to try these delicious cookies and learn more about Wisconsin potatoes and Wisconsin agriculture in general. So there are so many fun ways that I have been able to get into classrooms across the state of Wisconsin and provide a lot of education about Wisconsin's agriculture cultural industry. So what do you grade, grade up a potato and put it in the cookie batter or how, how do you do that? So this recipe actually used potato chips. Oh. So we had some Wisconsin branded potato chips that we added into the recipe. And we also used a little bit of instant mashed potatoes to add some texture to those chocolate chip cookies. So they were absolutely delicious. And because we were using some potatoes, those cookies were even a little bit more crispier and more golden brown as they baked. And the potatoes did add delicious flavor. You had the sweetness of the chocolate chips and some of those other ingredients and the saltiness of potatoes. So it's a recipe I would highly recommend trying, especially if you like some sweet and savory food combinations combined. And that recipe for potato and chocolate chip cookies can be found on eatwisconsinpotatoes.com. I'm going to have to try that. I like sweet and salt. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we we go back to when I was uh, young, it seemed like there was a cheese factory about every, I don't know, maybe several miles. Um, And we don't have that anymore, but we still have a lot of family owned factories, don't we? We do. We were chatting earlier. We have over 100 cheese making companies here in the state of Wisconsin. And all of these cheese making companies produce very unique products when it comes to different flavors that they might add into their cheese. And they offer a few other different products as well. And in Wisconsin, 
dairy is truly a family owned business with our farms too. As we talked earlier, 95% of the dairy farms here in Wisconsin are family owned. And that's where dairy production starts because we need high quality milk in order to make high quality dairy products that we are known for here in Wisconsin. Um, is this true that uh, Wisconsin is the only state to require a license to make cheese? We are. So Wisconsin is the only only state in the country that offers a master cheesemaker program. And in order to become a master cheesemaker, you must first be a licensed cheesemaker. So Wisconsin and Europe are the only two parts of the world that require their cheesemakers to be licensed. And especially in order to become a master cheesemaker and produce different varieties of cheese, oftentimes our licensed cheesemakers go to school for upwards of 10 years to learn the ins and outs of cheesemaking as it truly is an art. And our master cheesemakers are very dedicated to their craft and they produce some very delicious cheeses, many of which are in our Wisconsin cheese campaign this year. Good stuff. Let's talk about cheese spreads. I think you've brought a couple with you today, haven't you? I have some cheese spreads specifically from Pine River Cheese and some of the flavors Flavors with the cheese spreads that we are featuring during our cheese campaign is a garlic and herb cheese spread as well as a spicy beer cheese spread. So cheese spreads are blends of natural cheeses and we also add in some other flavors to create very flavorful cheese spreads that can be used with crackers. Maybe you spread it out on a sandwich or you can use cheese spreads in many different recipes. And cheese spreads are made from semi-soft or semi-hard cheeses and some of those flavor examples that we add into cheese spreads might include vegetables fruits meats certain spices or other flavors that truly make each cheese spread unique and all of us can make cheese spreads at home just by using almost any variety of semi-soft or semi-hard cheese and adding in our own flavors that we might want to enjoy really i didn't i had never thought about making my own cheese spread at home neither did i until this year but it's so easy to make again just by having almost any variety of semi-soft or semi-hard cheese and you might add your own flavor spin on your homemade cheese spread depending on your flavor preferences. How do you get it so it's spreadable and not like breakable where it breaks my cracker? <laughs> Great question. So it'll certainly rely on those cheeses being melted at first to really get a consistent texture and then it's just very important that those cheese spreads are refrigerated in order to maintain that spreadable texture after they have been cooled and they're ready to be enjoyed. But I would also recommend that when you are ready to serve a cheese spread that you leave it out at room temperature for maybe a few minutes or even a few hours before you're ready to serve so that cheese has had a chance to get just a little bit softer to make it easy to spread on that cracker or on that piece of bread that you might be enjoying. We went by the Super Bowl over a month ago now, but uh, that's probably one of the biggest days for dairy products, isn't it? I, I would like to think so. When it comes to all of the different foods that we might consume during a Super Bowl watch party, Party, or even now during March Madness, certainly dairy products come into play, whether it's cheese spreads that you might use with crackers, or you have a lot of different dips that use dairy products like cheese and sour cream. I love just having a simple cheese board that you can use during maybe a Super Bowl party, a March Madness party, even around the holidays, right? There are so many ways that we can use Wisconsin dairy products for a lot of different celebrations and festivities that we might have each and every year. Do you have a preference on a cracker or not? I really don't have a preference no. on a cracker because I enjoy all crackers. Sometimes even your classic Ritz cracker mm. is really enjoyable to use with a lot of different Wisconsin cheeses, but I really have no personal preference when it comes to crackers. Oftentimes I'm very focused 
on the cheese, but the cracker is a nice compliment as well. And venison sausage too, maybe, right? Venison sausage and a lot of different sausages and other protein products make delicious additions to cheese boards. And fun fact, which I learned recently, a cheese board you can only be referenced as a cheese board if there's only cheese and a few other garnishes, like maybe some fruits or some crackers within that board. But a cheese board becomes a charcuterie board when we might add in different meats. So that's something unique I've learned as Alice in Dairyland is the difference between cheese boards and charcuterie boards. So you have to have some meat involved if you're going to go to the next level then. Exactly. If you're going to call it a charcuterie board. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. You brought along a little uh, care package for WRCO today. Um, what is in here? Is there something I should try that uh, is pretty unique? I recommend trying all of the different parts of our mini charcuterie board that we oh. have here in studio. So I included some Colby Jack cheese since we've been talking oh, about yeah. Colby Jack here today. We also have some small pieces of sausage uh -huh. that help to make this board a charcuterie board. I also included a few sweeter ingredients in this charcuterie board, including yogurt covered pretzels, some sweetened cashews, as well as some dried banana chips. So we made it a little bit sweet, a little bit salty. It sounds like you enjoy all sweet oh, yeah. and salty oh, yeah. things. So I'm really excited to have you try some of these Wisconsin products. Mm, this is good. Um, and this is what, Colby Jack? That is Colby Jack cheese, specifically from Henning's cheese. Mm, that's really good. And, and it's mild, too. I'm kind of more of a mild fan, I think. So Yes, Colby Jack is known for its mild flavor mm -hmm. and its versatility. And that's why Colby Jack is so great when we mix it into maybe soups or sauces or add it into a lot of other foods that we might be enjoying. Mm. And the sausage is good, too, there. So I'm mm -hmm. glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. Oh, I wasn't supposed to, right? I was supposed to no, wait, you're supposed to wait till the show was done. You're supposed to enjoy it, whether it's during the show or after the show. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you've got pretzels in there and sweet and salty and all the good things from Wisconsin. So. All great Wisconsin products. Pretty amazing thing. How can people learn more about uh, the Alice in Dairyland program? If you would like to learn more about Alice in Dairyland and follow along with my adventures as Wisconsin's 76th Alice in Dairyland or follow along with our next Alice in Dairyland, the 77th Alice in Dairyland, you can find us on our social media channels. We can be found on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or X, formerly known as Twitter, at aliceindairyland.com. And you can also visit our website. That's aliceindairyland.com. So you can find all information about the Alice in Dairyland program history, some of our current initiatives within Alice in Dairyland. And you can also find a lot of great information as we prepare for the 77th Alice in Dairyland finals taking place in Door County this year. Also, if you have an event coming up that you would like Alice in Dairyland to be a part of, you can visit our website. Once again, that's aliceindairyland.com and you can request Alice through our website. So there's lots of great ways to stay engaged and connected with our program. And we would love Love to have you learn more about Alice in Dairyland and Wisconsin agriculture. And you'll be there for putting the new crown on the new Alice's head then, I guess, at the ceremony? I will be. The Alice in Dairyland finals will take place at Stone Harbor Resort in Sturgeon Bay. And the 77th Alice will officially be announced on the evening of Saturday, May 4th. So it'll be a very exciting event. We have so enjoyed traveling to Door County and learning more about agriculture in that part of Wisconsin. And I'm very excited for our top candidates to begin their journey toward becoming Wisconsin's 77th Alice in Dairyland. So what is up next for you, Ashley, uh, for, for this next year? I am looking forward to continuing to represent Wisconsin agriculture through the month of July as Wisconsin's 76th Alice in Dairyland. And after my year of service has concluded, I look forward to staying involved in agriculture, both personally and professionally. I look forward to having a career in agriculture after my year of Alice in Dairyland is concluded to hopefully continue positively impacting our state's farm 
farmers and processors here in Wisconsin and representing farmers across the United States. And personally, I look forward to staying engaged in agriculture through volunteering and staying involved as a mentor, maybe through 4-H or FFA or other agricultural organizations. There are so many opportunities when it comes to Wisconsin agriculture, and I look forward to seeing what else is out there when it comes to the industry of agriculture. You think you'll wind up on a farm someday? Could be. One never knows, but I know that what I love about agriculture is the people, and that is what initially inspired me to become more involved in this industry, and the people are what really, truly inspire me every day. So whether I'm on a farm or off the farm, engaging in agriculture in a lot of different ways, my goal is to positively impact the hardworking people who truly make agriculture possible. You've learned a lot, haven't you? I've learned so much. <laughs> and every day, I'm certainly learning something new as Alice in Dairyland. And I love the chance to deepen my knowledge of Wisconsin agriculture and also share that knowledge wherever I go. Sounds good. It's been great having you stop by here today. Yes, thank you again for having me and continue to enjoy plenty of Wisconsin cheese during the month of March, but really any time of year. Right. And that final four and then the final two for cheeses, uh, you know, when can we expect all of those to be announced? Uh, those will be announced over the next few weeks in March, and we will have our champion cheese selected at the end of March. Expect that unveiling a about March 29th, tentatively, is when we'll have our champion cheese announced. I'm kind of pulling for this Kobe Jack you brought in here. So Hey, you'll have to vote, I'll right? have to vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> great, great to have you here. Nice, Thank you again. Nice to meet you. You bet. Ashley Hagenow, who is the 76th Allison Dairyland on our morning show today.